Hi, this is Dr. A with a clinical chemistry review on serous and synovial fluid analysis. So let's start with serous fluids. So the lungs, heart, and abdominal cavities are surrounded by two serous membranes. We have the parietal membrane that lines the cavity wall and the visceral membrane that lines the organs. And so if you apply that to each, for example, for the lung, you would have the uh, parietal pleura and the visceral pleura. Parietal pleura would be in the thoracic cavity. The visceral pleura is on top of the lungs. For the heart, it's pericardial. Again, pericardial, um, the parietal, parietal pericardium is around, it's, it makes that cavity and then uh, that the heart is contained in, and even though it's a membrane cavity, it's like a sac, the, then the visceral pericardium is what's right on top of the heart. Same thing for abdominal, you just substitute with peritoneal, so you have uh, the um, parietal peritoneum uh, lines the abdominal cavity and the visceral peritoneum lines every organ. So it would line you know, your stomach, small intestine, large intestine, liver, all of those things. Um, and so then the fluid that's located between these two membranes, between the um, parietal and the visceral membranes, is there, uh, it's actually to limit friction between the membranes because there's uh, motion in a lot of these organs. So your heart is beating, your lungs are inhaling and exhaling air, uh, your abdominal uh, cavity, there's there's stuff moving around and there being pushed fluids and foods and stuff being pushed through. And so uh, there's movement all the time. And so these fluids are to allow um, movement without friction and stuff. So the fluid in each of these cavities is going to be pleural fluid around the lungs, the pericardial fluid around the heart, and the peritoneal fluid around in the abdominal cavity. They account for 45 percent of the body's water volume and share common characteristics uh, in regard to their uh, chemical composition. So all of these do. Alterations of these fluids and volumes are due to an imbalance in pressures that can lead to a shifting of fluids into the tissue spaces and it can cause an accumulation of fluid. So the fluid will accumulate in the abdominal cavity or uh, around the heart or around the lungs. This accumulation of fluid is called an effusion and that effusion can be further classified as a transudate or an exudate and more on that in just a second. Okay, so transudate versus exudate. So transudates occur during systemic diseases does, that disrupt the fluid filtration or fluid reabsorption or both. Example causes are congestive heart fa failure, hepatic cirrhosis, and nephrotic syndromes. Uh, the exudates occur during inflammatory process that result in damage to blood vessel walls, membrane damage, or decreased reabsorption by the lymphatic system. Example causes are going to be infections, inflammations, hemorrhages, and malignancies. So let's talk about the pleural fluid. So in normal conditions, there's 3 to 20 milliliters of pleural fluid around your lungs. Um, the assignment of fluid to either transudate or exudate category is based on a series of fluid plasma ratios known as Leibniz criteria. For example, if the if fluid to plasma ratio of protein is greater than 0 0.5, or the fluid to plasma ratio for LD is greater than 0 0.6, then you can classify that fluid as an exudate. You can also test for glucose, lactate, amylase, and triglycerides or pH. Um, a decrease in glucose or an increase in lactate with suggestion of infection or inflammation. An increase in amylase compared with that of serum is suggestive of pancreatitis. And elevated triglyceride levels that are 2 to 10 times that of serum could indicate a thoracic duct leakage. So let's look at pericardial fluid next. Uh, the relationship of the pericardial and pericardial fluid and the heart is similar to that with the lungs and pleural fluid. The procedure for removing excess pericardial fluid called peri pericardiosynthesis is dangerous and therefore rarely performed and it would be usually performed by like a cardiovascular surgeon. Um, they would be performed if cultures are needed to investigate an infection in that pericardium or um, in the heart. If cytology is needed for a suspected malignancy, again involving the heart, um, and adenosine deaminase testing can also be requested in uh, suspected cases of tubercular effusion, so re re related to a TB infection. 
So lastly, let's look at peritoneal fluid. So excess fluid, more than 50 mils in a peritoneal cavity indicates disease. Um, excess, this excess peritoneal fluid is called ascites, and the fluid is called acidic fluid. The same mechanisms that cause serous effusions and other um, um, body cavities are operative for the peritoneal. Um, a disturbance in the rate of dialysis secondary to a remote patho pathology is a transudate compared with a primary pathology of the peritoneal membrane causing an exudate. So uh, the most common cause of transudative ascites is going to be portal hypertension. Exudative causes of ascites are predominantly metastatic ovarian prostate and uh, colon cancer and infective peritonitis. Differentiating the transudates and exudates is uh, the serum ascites albumin grading or SAG. Uh, you do, do that difference and um, the and compared results to the ratio and you can decide if it's an exudate or transudate. And lastly, synovial fluid. The fluid found in the cavities is, is the fluid found in cavities of movable joints. Uh, such as, for example, the knee, elbow, hips, all of that, shoulder. Synovial fluid is formed by ultrafiltration of the plasma across the synovial membrane. It serves as, a, as the transport medium for delivery of nutrients and removal of uh, cell waste. Um, the normal spinal, I'm sorry, the normal, normal synovial fluid is clear, colorless to pale yellow, viscous, and non clotic. It is very slippery. Variations are indicative of pathologic conditions, uh, and the sample is collected via an orthosynthesis of the joint. And you're looking for things like, you know, white cells or crystals and all of that to indicate what kind of pathology might be going on in the synovial fluid, on the synovial membrane of that joint. And that is the last. Thank you.